Good morning, folks. The earthquake watch continues hitting with a magnitude 7 striking the East Pacific rise. There was no tsunami created, but it is the largest rumble of the current watch and complemented by some smaller shakes in the area, also took a polar quake east of northern Greenland. The sun briefly woke up to see what all the fuss was about, popping a couple M-class solar flares from the southern departing active region. There was no significant CME produced and the flares were merely M1-class. That active region itself complexed in a serious way the last 24 hours and remnants of the magnetic mixing can still be found there this morning. We've been dealing with some geomagnetic instability the last few hours. The last three days of solar wind show some incredibly dense readings in orange, with fluctuations in the Phi and BZ up top indicating a potential solar sector boundary crossing. KP index jumped up to 4 showing the unstable conditions. The dark coronal holes here are the primary conductors of the current earthquake watch. You can see not only the southern opening bit but one on the north as well. And according to ISWA, looking at the October 9th position, those coronal holes maintain at least moderate power in some areas and interestingly they are both negative. That's a significantly large opening there. Last solar note is that the SDO satellite performed a flip maneuver the last day to cool the sunlit side. Got a great visualization of how the comet 67P moves. This is the latest from Rosetta. If you remember, the great star water confirmation from last month about half our water is older than the solar system. Well, we got an even better star water confirmation yesterday showing that indeed the solar wind is a far larger contributor to lunar water than comets were. This is part of the primary point of our star water series. Meanwhile, We've got interesting news about a pulsar with the power of 10 million suns at the center of the Messier 82 galaxy. NASA's JPL also included an amazing visualization which invokes thoughts of quasars and cosmic jets. It might explain why these things are hard to see from the ecliptic, just like we have trouble seeing the center of our galaxy. We're back on Tropics Watch as India has its first alert in months. Hood Hood is strengthening and charging for the east coast of the subcontinent. Meanwhile, Vong Fong has become a super typhoon. This thing's a beast with those small islands south of Japan ready to take the brunt of the impact before it weakens slightly and then takes on the mainland of the nation. Quickly looking for earth spots at our quake zone reveals a mishmash of cells. Possible candidate there. Meanwhile, in North America, we've got the main low up north. It's convergence mostly offshore, but still driving cooler air around the west side. And the furthest of that is meeting with heat and moisture from the Gulf of Mexico. That's a nice little convergence way away from the actual low. Snow still possible in the north, while flash flood alerts stick to the convergence in the central states. That same low is still a factor in Europe. It is still driving storm activity on the mainland where Mediterranean flows meet it and also back up at the UK. Tonight's storm zones are simple products of those flows. Meanwhile, down under, we've got two convergences near New Zealand, going to put most of that nation under precipitation the next day. Also got a wind gust warning in south central Australia where that little low can be found. As you may have noticed, Helio viewer is back online. We've got shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.